Like when I put out a blog post on the blog, it's a lead building tactic, right? It's meant to pull in organic traffic and put people on my email list. I'll take that same piece of content and I'll put it on Facebook as a pure text post. Like it won't be a link back to anything. It'll just be a text post. And the point of it there is not to build my list, it's to build my audience. What's going on, everybody on YouTube? Welcome all the listeners on iTunes. Steve Rakin here. Welcome back to another episode of the Rakin Profit Show. This is episode number 37, and we have my good buddy Cam Jennings on the show today. He runs a YouTube channel with 16,000 subscribers, and it goes by the name of Zero Fats Returns. He also is the proud owner of the blog, epicconversions.com. He's big into product launches, affiliate marketing. He has a membership site with over 700 members. Uh, He's actually sold over 5,000 units, I believe, on the Warrior Forum. Correct me if that's that's wrong, Cam, but I'm really, really happy to have you here, man, and talk about product launches, affiliate marketing, email marketing, all the (laughs) different opportunities that are out there, man. So what is happening, man? Live from Ohio. Dude, thanks a lot for having me, Steven. I am a super big fan of your YouTube channel, man. I, I am honored to be here. Thanks so much for having me on, man. Man, I appreciate it. I've uh, really been enjoying your content as well. So if you guys want to follow Cam, I'm going to leave all of his information down below, his blog, YouTube channel, also his Facebook, because he's been like killing it with some live streams lately. And I've been hopping on and, and getting some tips from you. So that's really cool. How far do we go back? Was it the eBay days? When I was full time, just getting, I think I had quit my job because I remember you were you were commenting and we were chit chatting a couple times <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, man, I, I, dude, I love your channel, man, and yeah, I, I was watching your channel ever since. That's what I did. I, I just sold on eBay and Amazon, and people like you picking picking for profits, and you know, hustler, rock, man, uh, I can't bonafide remember. hustler, bonafide hustler, all those all those cats doing the picking videos. I love that stuff, man. You used to do the 30 day trips, road, like trip. yep. road trips, and man, you'd be going to thrift stores, you'd be meeting up with other uh, pickers and stuff. And man, I just, I was just really into that culture and I thought it was awesome, dude. So yeah, it's, it's been, yeah, it's been a few years for sure. It goes by fast. <laughs> cool, man. Well, let's, let's update the people who are watching and listening now. What's your story, man? So I know back then, four or five years ago, you were messing around with picking eBay and Amazon. But then you would kind of, I don't know if this is the right way to say, disappeared off the scene. And I was always kind of curious, like, what did they end up doing? Because I saw you, <laughs> you were making different videos. I think you even had one about like P90X or something. To, I don't know. Was it P90X? And you were like trying to like get into affiliate marketing or something at the time? Yeah. Well, it's funny because I had two YouTube channels. I had a YouTube channel about making money online. And then I had another one because I was trying to lose weight, right? And I, and I called it Nutribullet at time because I bought this oh, blender. yeah. Yeah, I called. I bought this blender called the Nutribullet, and I said, "Man, let me see if I can just try to make my money back on this blender. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, and I'm gonna call it Nutribullet Time." And and yeah, man, I, on that channel, I just put videos about like smoothies and does the Nutribullet have good customer service and stuff like that. And I would call them up, and I'd have the video running. <laughs> I'm on speakerphone, and you know, just do stuff like that. But yeah, that channel kind of blew up, and. It, not blew up, but I mean, it was you had like, a lot of views though. And I remember looking at it like three years ago and I was like, holy smokes. Like you had videos that had a lot of views. Share, share some of that information. Yeah. I just started a channel for the blender and, and it just did really good. You know, like it was easy because it was just about one thing. Like, I mean, you can make smoothies endless, endlessly. And, you know, I was just focusing on that one thing, the blender. And then, you know, and if you think about it, the other YouTube channel I started with Zero Fast Returns was just about Amazon. It was just one thing. So both of those channels promoted fast growth because it just pulled in all the people who cared about that one subject. I don't know. And we were talking about this before we got on the interview, but I think it's like when you start talking about other subjects, that's when your growth slows down a little bit. Your growth is going to slow down a little bit because you're branching out and it's all good. And I think I think it's important to do that. But I don't know, man. It's It's a weird... It's a weird dynamic, you know. I've I've struggled with that as well because on this YouTube channel, you know, I started off with actually selling bicycles on Craigslist and I had like built an audience up. And then I went to clothing and I like went crazy with clothing. And then I started yeah. like 
upsetting the bicycle people. So they like unsubscribed. And then I moved <laughs> to like Kindle publishing. And then all my clothing people were like, Steve, screw off. What are you doing? Like, we want it, we want clothing. And then, you know, now I just kind of do a whole bunch of everything. And it's not that I want to offend my audience, but I think there's a point where you almost have to do what makes you happy in a sense. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot of power in, in diving into that one topic. I'm actually do you mind if I ask you a couple more questions about sure. the Nutribullet channel? Because that's yeah, like, absolutely. So you had that channel. How many views and like subscribers had you gotten that channel up to? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are watching who are like, yeah, wow, I just me, bought um, a new product or, you know. Let me look it up for you, man, because I don't know just off the top of my head. You know what I'll do, man? I'll go to, I wonder if I can, I could probably get that information without logging out my current thing by going to Social Blade. Basically, when they updated their uh, their new policy for the 4,000 hours of watch time, I was wondering about what the what the watch time was for Nutribullet at time, and it was it was a lot. It was like well over. I think it was like 28,000 hours a month or something. And then, wow. so that's 35,000 views for the last 30 days. So, so how are you monetizing that that channel? Was it just Google AdSense, or were you selling affiliate products and I know we're going to kind of dive more into your story, but I, I just find it's really interesting. I think people will yeah. be excited about that. Yeah, man. So I haven't really been active on Nutribullet time. I haven't been doing videos on Nutribullet time. I want to get back into that in 2018. There's a story why I stopped doing videos for Nutribullet time. But to answer your question, when I was doing the videos for Nutribullet time, I had a membership program and the membership program was just five bucks a month. And, and basically it was one video a week for Nutribullet time. All right, I'm going to do one video a week on Nutribullet time. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do five extra videos for my membership program a month. So just five pieces of content a month, five to eight, five to eight pieces of content a month for the members. And that would basically be like additional stuff that's exclusive for the membership site, like additional smoothie recipes or additional, hey, here's a cool tip if you're trying to lose five pounds or if you're trying to do this, if you're trying to get healthy, here's some interesting information about, you know, rice or whatever, you know, just different stuff like that. And it was pretty easy, uh, Raykin. It was pretty easy, Steve, because I was interested in that stuff. You know what I mean? And I still am. I I'm interested in health and I'm interested in that kind of stuff. So pretty easy to run a channel like that. But while I was doing Nutribullet at time and I was running that membership program, I was also running Zero Fast Returns and I was running a membership program for Zero Fast Returns as well. So I was doing two membership programs and two YouTube channels and running a Kindle publishing business and doing this and doing that and doing the other thing. And I was just feeling, feeling spread really thin, dude. And which kind of ties into what you're talking about earlier, you know, hiring some VAs and stuff like that to help you with your business. But I didn't have any VAs at the time and I was just spread really thin. So I let the membership program go on Nutribullet time. I closed that. I didn't monetize it after that. I just kind of did it for Google AdSense money or whatever. So cool, man. So let's transition over and kind of talk about where you are today to kind of build some context for all these uh, questions that I'm going to be drilling you with uh, <laughs> during, during this show. But what does your business look like today? Because again, you started, you were selling on eBay and Amazon and now you're full time, right? You work for yourself yep. and you know, you get to design your entire life, your, your entire business. What does your business look like now? What is, what does it look like living in the life of Cam Jennings in terms of your business and the different things that you have going on? And then we'll start to dive into, you know, each one. Yeah, sure, man. So right now what I do is I run a digital publishing and consulting agency. And what that basically is, is I publish and release digital information via products. I release content mostly via information products and I run a membership program as well to have like a foundation for that business, just the continuity program. And I consult and I teach other people how to do the same thing. I consult and coach. And then there's an affiliate marketing kind of division for what I do as well, where I'll promote other people. Generally, that isn't as much about making money. I mean, it does make money and it's good. But sometimes networking purposes, sometimes, you know, you'll promote for someone else just to kind of break the ice with that relationship and to kind of get the wheels turning with that, that networking relationship. So if that makes sense, I'm not trying to like, yeah, go. no, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes complete sense. So you, you run a digital marketing business essentially where you are launching digital products. And I believe you're using the warrior form in general. Yeah. I like which, the word, which form. is a website. Yeah. yeah it's I a like website it. that essentially allows you to 
launch products and there's a big following over there. Yeah, man, it's it's good. I started out on JVZoo. I was, you know, Alex Jeffries was a big influence in me and what I what I was doing. So he was he was on JVZoo. So I started out on JVZoo and I made the move to Warrior Plus a few years ago just because I felt as though it felt smaller. I'm not saying it is smaller. I'm just saying it felt smaller to me at the time. I felt like the product vendors over there were a little bit more accessible. It seemed easier for me to rise to the top. Whereas on JVZoo, I felt like kind of a little fish in a big pond. On Warrior Plus, it felt like I could rise through the ranks a lot quicker and and make moves and talk to other people. So that, that's why I moved over there, man. It just felt like a smaller pond and I could just I can maneuver myself into a position of status faster. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. So, I mean, you came from a world of, of selling physical products and now you have this digital marketing business where you're selling, weird, right? you know, digital products. What do you, you know, for the people who are listening, a lot of people listening, they're doing eBay, Amazon, wholesale, yeah. private label, Craigslist, physical business. But I, I talk to a lot of people and a lot of people want to start earning passive income or or having you know various branches of their business that are digital because we're living in a digital world now. What are your thoughts? Is 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 digital marketing and selling digital products for everyone? What are the pros and cons to it? Because you've you've come from both worlds, and I've been selling digital products for about four years now, and I, I love it. But uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, man. I mean, neither one of those things are for everyone. I mean, selling physical products on Amazon or eBay is a lot of work, as you know. You got to love a source, you know. You either got to love the source or you got to love getting on the phone with a manufacturer in China and developing a relationship so that you can get good products and not be undercut by a thousand other people, whatever. That's a whole other thing. But the point is, neither of those businesses are for everybody. I mean, when I first started, I thought I could teach anybody how to do this. And this is better than anybody's day-to-day -day job because they hate their job right now. Well, this is way better working for yourself. <laughs> That's just not true. I mean, it's not true for everybody. I mean, it, it depends on, on what you're about. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I love digital publishing better than physical, physical sales as far as like selling on Amazon or eBay. I like it more, man, because it's less work. It's less mm. physical, physical work. I love going out and sourcing products at thrift stores. <laughs> man, I, look, I totally get the idea of going out and finding a baseball cap for 25 cents and being able to turn around and sell it for $45. I mean, I love that. That is amazing. And there is no greater rush in the world than being able to do something like that. I remember <laughs> this one time I found this David, this uh, David Ramsey, I think the guy who does the savings. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And like, okay. So I found this box set of his at a thrift store for like two bucks. I turned around and sold it on Amazon within eight hours for like $80. Like, and that's a win, dude. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> was it in a yellow box? Yes. I've sold that exact same one too. It's like his like university or something. I found yes. it too. It's crazy. It's yeah. freaking crazy what people are willing to pay. What, what happens is that's a win and it's great. But like, that's the fun part. Like the not fun part is taking home like a car full of crap, listing it all on Amazon and then finding a place to store it. And if you really get into it full time, like, like I did, and I'm sure like you did, you end up with a storage unit. You end up with like some kind of climate controlled space outside of your home, because if you don't, you're going to end up with a garage full of crap and your wife's right. going to be yelling at you all the time <laughs> because you've taken over the garage with your inventory. So, so yeah, you know, like in that respect, this is way better. So for me, what I did was I thought I was the king of the world selling physical books on Amazon. And I <laughs> decided I was going to write an ebook about selling physical books on Amazon. And I thought it was going <laughs> to change the world because I thought teaching everybody else how to do this physical book business, everyone's going to be able to quit their jobs. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to make a million dollars selling this book. And uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. I, I spent a couple months writing this ebook called, oh, uh, wow. yeah, called Broke to Boss, The Lean Guide to Successful Online Book Selling. <laughs> Was and this I, a Kindle book or? Yeah, or... it's a Kindle book. It's still on Amazon right now. It's called uh, Broke to Boss. I, it was four ninety nine. It proceeded to sell maybe a couple copies a month, <laughs> and and I was I proceeded to be heartbroken. <laughs> like what? You've been a billionaire in a thousand years, brother. Keep stay strong. 
Yeah, exactly, man. And, and I thought this sucks, man. You know, and like many people who tried an entrepreneurial venture, I thought, well, I can either just keep on selling physical books or I can figure out how to make this book get sold more. So I had a YouTube channel that was about my music. I, I play music and stuff. And I, so I thought, well, maybe I could do a new YouTube channel about, you know, what I'm doing with physical book sales on Amazon. And I'll talk about that. And then in my videos, I'll pitch my digital book that I got. So I do a video and I talk to people about physical sales and I'd say, hey guys, if you like this, make sure you check out my ebook. It's for sale on Amazon. It links in the description. So that worked, right? And it, and it worked. And I noticed uptick in sales for my ebook. And I was like, well, hey, what do you know, man? I'm driving Not traffic. Marketing. For- yeah, giving yeah. value first. And then they get to like you, they get value. And then they obviously want a little more. So the problem with that was, what I felt like the problem with that was, Amazon was taking 30% of my ebook sales. And it's only $4.99. You guys are taking 30% and I'm driving all the extra traffic. It's all coming from my YouTube channel. Why am I doing this? So I thought, well, I could drive people to a website just as easy as I could drive them to Amazon. I was reading this book at the time. It was called Membership Sites That Make Money. And anybody who's listening to this, I mean, I, I suggest you always be kind of reading things and keeping the ideas turning. But I was reading this book. It was called Membership Sites That Make Money. And I was getting inspired at the time. I was getting inspired at the time to try to do this membership site thing. And I thought what I'd do is I'd take that ebook that I wrote and I'd reposition the content. And I'd take the ebook and I'd make each chapter like a web page. And at the top of the web page, I'd make a video like for that chapter, right? So now it's not going to be an ebook anymore, Steven. Now it's going to be a video course, right? It's going to be a a video workshop. And I decided I was going to, you know, charge $10 for this. Month or just a $10 access fee? Well, when I first started, it was just a $10 access fee, right? Um, And I was driving. and, And for the first two months, I didn't make any sales. I started trying to drive people to this membership workshop and I wasn't making any sales. And I was like, oh, here we go, man. Another failed uh, deal. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) You know, and then uh, two months in, I decided to check out my process for checking out. I decided to actually test it. Like, this is how green I was. I didn't even check my. Don't tell me what I think you're going to tell me. Keep going. It didn't work, dude. It didn't work. (laughs) People couldn't buy it. People were actually hitting the page and then trying to buy it, and it was like a 404 error or something. I wouldn't know, man, because I didn't have analytics hooked up to my my, my website. So I, I wouldn't know if people were trying or not because I was a oh, fool. Geez. I was a fool, Steven. That's why. <laughs> no, oh, but I was a dude, This is perfect. Yeah, so like, I mean, look, here's the – I guess the little moral to that is – like, was it, there wasn't nobody greener than me. There wasn't nobody with less technical ability than me. I mean, I was in way over my head, but I was just, look, I think my talent is like, I just jump. And then like, I just, I just take relentless action and I figure it out as I go. And I think that if you want to succeed online, you have to keep moving forward. If you have a project, you don't need to be the smartest guy in the room, but, but you need to keep the project moving forward. And, and those, those are words I live by to this day. But anyways, yeah, dude. So once I figured out that didn't work, you thought you think I would have hired somebody to fix it, but you would think wrong. <laughs> what I did was I tried to fix it myself because I don't need any help, Steven. I can do everything myself. So instead of just hiring someone to fix the WordPress site, like now I'm going to try to become a WordPress expert and figure out what's wrong with everything and like spend all these hours trying to figure it out. And that's what I did for like three Been there, days. Done that. Three days, dude. Three days I tried to fix this checkout process, looking over blogs and looking over YouTube videos and you're doing this and doing that, trying to figure out, getting frustrated. It's not working. You know, borrow, you know, it's just crazy. Just a bunch of stuff, man. So what happened was three days into this nonsense, I just say, screw it. I go over to Fiverr, pay someone five bucks. They fix it in 15 minutes. And Shut like, up. Yeah, they fix it in 15 minutes. Like within eight hours, I get my first my first sale to my to my uh wow. my workshop. That's a huge that's a huge lesson in itself right there. So you fought <laughs> yeah. for three days, couldn't figure it out. And 
different decision. Five dollars. You made your first sale, and it's been what two months now, and you're wondering what am I doing wrong? Yeah, yeah, it was stupid, man. Well, the, for the two months, I was yeah, it was dumb because people suffer from like the idea that like if you failed before, like you have this kind of failure mentality, you just think it's gonna fail. Like for some reason, I'm just one of those dumb people, even though I thought it was going to fail. Like I just kept on doing it anyway. Probably like a lot of people, you just keep on hitting your head against the wall. Even though you think it's going to fail, even on a subconscious level, you're thinking it's going to fail, but you keep on trying anyway. But me thinking it was going to fail on a subconscious level blinded me from truly fixing the problem. If that makes sense, I'm not trying to get too crazy, but uh, it, it was, yeah, like you said, it was, it was a big deal. So anyway, I ran, the, I ran that workshop for a couple months uh, as a one-time fee, and then I decided, I kind of plotted it out to where it made sense to just start adding content every month. And very soon, man, very soon, it was, it was making you know, a few thousand dollars a month just doing that. Oh, wow. um, it, when I closed it, it was, I had over 300 members paying me $14.97 a month when I closed the doors on adventuresontheriver.com. And... A lot of people said I was crazy for closing it because it was making a lot of money, but I um, didn't want to talk about Amazon anymore. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about Amazon anymore, man. I was done talking about so Amazon. So you're kind of getting bored. You were bored with it in a sense, and you didn't feel like you can serve that audience anymore because you weren't passionate. I wasn't doing it anymore, really. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't like a, when I closed it. It was because I wanted to stay honest, and you know, I don't want to talk about something I'm not even really you know, doing anymore because when I closed it, I had already launched a couple of products in the internet marketing space. And I was really interested in affiliate marketing. I was really interested in digital publishing. I was really interested in e-learning and I felt like that is the future. And I feel like, I still feel like that's the future. So that's why I wanted to be there. So, and I, I feel like I love Amazon. Don't get me wrong. I, everybody out there listening to this guys, I love Amazon, but you know, we, we don't own that business. I mean, we are we are renters on Amazon. Anytime they can kick us off if they want to. I mean, it's a great way to make money, but it's hard. It's hard. You're not dynamic enough. You, you got to protect your business better than that. It's, you know, uh, you can't have a six-figure business that someone else can decide to close the doors on you in one second, and then all of a sudden you're making nothing. <laughs> that's not That's not good, man. That's really bad. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I think this is a perfect time to talk about, I know we're talking about digital marketing and a little bit of affiliate marketing product launches, but one of the things I love about like, for example, having your own website, selling your own products, even if it's, even if it's physical or digital, it doesn't really matter. But if you're selling it on your own website, what's the one thing cam that you get access to that you don't get access to on eBay or Amazon that has to do with the customer? Yeah. You get the email, the one you get thing? the email database, you get the emails, you get the leads. And that's huge. And, and essentially that's everything that is everything. Why do you think eBay or Amazon will not give you that access? Because they know, what do they know? Why do they, why won't they give us the email? That's where the money comes from. That's where, the, that's the core of the business. Like, you know, we bring in a customer for them. They get the email. They send out the emails for those customers. Those customers go on to buy other things on Amazon or eBay that has nothing to do with us. And we do not make money off of that. I know because the last two years, 80 to 85% of my monetary transactions have been through email transactions. Like I, I do Facebook, I do YouTube, I do social media, and those are audience building strategies. They, exactly. they, build, they build audience. That audience trickles into an email list. The email list is the core of the business. The blog is the face of the business. Like that's another way to bring people in. It's, it's the face of your business, but it's not the core. The core is the email list. And exactly what you said, you don't get the core of the business on those platforms, unfortunately. So so the business you're running now, you're launching products, digital products on the Warrior Plus Forum. Let me start with how many products, are, first, of, first and foremost, how are you getting these products? Are you making them on your own? Are you hiring somebody? Are you partnering up with, with experts? How are you actually creating that product? There's a lot of ways to create a product. Me personally, I do a lot of things. I test a lot of things. So yes, I, I do a lot of the product creation myself. I, that doesn't mean you have to. I'm kind of a control freak. Like we were talking about this earlier. Like I just want to control everything. I'm afraid if I let someone else do it, they're going to mess it up. So 
I got to no, no, the, the product's going to be messed up if I hire it out. You know, it's not enough mm. for me to, it's not enough for me to like outline a, outline a method or a strategy for doing things online and then giving it over to someone else to create the product. I got this weird hang of where I got to do everything. <laughs> if I don't do it, it's not going to be done right. You don't have to do that. Yeah. So me personally, I like to do the product creation. Uh, and the reason I do like to do the product creation is because there's a few things happening in a, in a digital product. Okay. Number one, I want the customer to get actionable content. I want them to get actionable value. Like when they walk away from that product, I need them to be able to go, okay, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. But also I need there to be entertainment value in the product. I, I need them to walk away feeling cool about what they just experienced. And the reason I need that is because of what we just talked about. You know, I need to be able to build a rapport with them from jump because I'm going to send them more emails. And when I send them more emails, I want them to open those emails. And the first step is building rapport and the product they just bought. So how are you getting those a typical, like, let's just, let's jump ahead real quick and say you have a product, you created it. Uh, you've got the landing page, the sales page, you've got the, the checkout everything all set up affiliates. You got the whole thing ready to roll. And that's a huge conversation in itself. And then you go to, you go to launch it. You're sending it out to your email list. How are you initially even building that email list? Cause somebody's watching right now and they're like, all right, I have an idea. I have something cool. Maybe they're into gardening and they want to create like a gardening membership site all about hydroponics or something. I don't know. There's so many yeah. different niches. How do you start to gather emails? Do you have any tips? Generally when people start out, they don't have an audience. So Everybody who is sustainably making money on the internet, sustainably practice audience building. Everybody. The core of the audience is the email list. So audience building is the key. Email list is the core. And everyone you find on the internet making sustainable money month after month after month without fail are audience builders and list builders. And that's just the way it is. So if you're just starting out, right? And you don't have an email list and you don't have a buyer's list. You don't have these things to draw from. This is a matter of leverage, right? You, you need to work on building leverage for your business. So what you got to do is number one, you need to pick a platform where people hang out like a natural habitat, like Facebook or YouTube, like where all your customers are living, like all your customers are living there, right? Every day they're hanging out there, whether that's the gram, whether that's Facebook, whether that's YouTube, whether that's Pinterest, whether that's mm. whatever, you know, where, where your, where are your customers hanging out? Where My are your space. potentials hanging out? Yeah. So like, where are they hanging out? Well, wherever they're hanging out, that's where you need to be. You need to be hanging out there and you're not there to put people on a list necessarily. You're not there to, you know, get them to buy your crap necessarily. You're there to pull them around you. You're there to build audience and Let's, let's consider the path of a piece of free content for a second. Like if we think about, and this kind of ties into audience building. So we think about the path of a free piece of content, right? Like if you put out a piece of content that's free, like a, like a blog post. Like when I put out a blog post on the blog, it's a lead building tactic, right? It's meant to pull in organic traffic and put people on my email list. I'll take that same piece of content and I'll put it on Facebook as a pure text post. Like it won't be a link back to anything. It'll just be a text post. And the point of it there is not to build my list. It's to build my audience. It's to pull people mm. around me and do thinking, not tricking. And I don't mean this as a manipulative strategy. I'm not trying to sound all manipulative and expert. No, I get it. But on Facebook, you know, the point is to pull people around me, to show them, hey, I'm a couple steps ahead of you, right? So I might be able to help you. So like that's that's the point and that's audience building. So on Facebook it's audience building strategy. I can take that same blog post and I could ask myself what does the YouTube video look like for that piece of content. So then I can do the YouTube video. Again on YouTube it's audience building. I mean some of those people will trickle onto my email list, but at its core I'm audience building on YouTube. I'm pulling people around me. You know, so so that's that's kind of what I think, man. I think audience building is the key and, and email list is the core. And when we talk about leverage for new guys, I think a really great thing to do is to start a simple YouTube channel and to start interviewing experts in your space. Mm. Okay. Like, because the thing is, if you can interview people who have audiences, there will be some celebrity by association. 
there will be some of their audience. Think about it, Stephen. What if you see me interviewing Tom Brady next week? I mean, I'm not just going to be some nobody anymore. Now I'm going to be like, damn, Cam must – Man, he must be something, man. If he knows Tom I'm Brady, pick you first, man. We play when we play some flag football, man. I'm picking you first because you know Tom Brady. He, he, he there's something's going on. <laughs> this cat knows Tom Brady, man. He must know. He must be something. Like subconsciously, right. on a subconscious oh, level, it. it's like social proof. Yeah, we're putting you in a different category on a subconscious level. So I say, if you have no leverage in your business, like that's an easy way to start. Is and you don't have to interview people who are like. I mean, you don't have to go out and interview Gary V. I I mean, you're not going to get that guy anyway, but you're brand new. Can you interview people that are just a few steps ahead of you? Just a couple steps, you know, maybe interview the guy who's released one digital product or he started a, a blog last year and it's, it's profitable now. Interview that guy, right? So by interviewing these people, you can start to build a little leverage for your business. And that's a great way to start audience building. And, and then the other thing is, dude, publish consistently. You got to publish consistently. I know there's people out there and all they do, Stephen, is digital publishing paid products. One of them was my coach and he told me, Cam, you need to get rid of this free line. <laughs> you need to get rid of this free line, dude. You need to take the free line way down. He thought I was putting out too much free content. And, and like, and I said, well, what do you do? You know, and he's like, all I do is launch digital products and coach. I don't have a blog. I don't have any free line. All I do is this. And in my mind, it didn't make sense for a minute. For a minute, I was like, well, how do you audience build like that? That doesn't make any sense. But it does make sense, Stephen. The reason it makes sense is because your email list is the core of your audience. And he was building a buyer's list with every single product launch. His buyer's list was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So... Yeah, I see a lot of the guys in the Warrior Forum do that. They have zero presence. They have zero blog. They have zero social media. And what they're doing is they're leveraging affiliates. So say, for example, I have a product of indoor gardening. What I would do is I would find affiliates like Cam or somebody who has a, the keys, you have to have an affiliate who has an email list that's targeted towards that. Because if I'm trying to sell an indoor uh, gardening program to an Amazon seller, they don't care. So, <laughs> so what you're saying is your coach was saying is find these affiliates get them to sell it for you because once you sell that product, you get their email list. So if they sold, I don't know, 3000 units for you, you know, you now have an email list of 3000 buyers who are interested in indoor gardening and are proven to spend money on the internet. They're not just That's people who are out there because think about it. If I mean, it, it's the absolute truth and it makes total sense. The only downside to those leads are, you know, for a fact, and I might be getting a little too crazy here, but look, you know for a fact, if you're, if you're building a buyer's list with affiliates, okay, here's what you know for sure. They are on at least one other marketer's list, right? So They're probably getting smashed with emails from a million people. Yeah, so it's lead saturation, right? So like these leads are saturated. So there's a difference in quality of lead. Like the lead you get from a YouTube video, someone who's been watching your YouTube videos, you might be their first introduction into internet marketing. You might be their... Mm you might be their first influence into how to make money online. You might've helped them make their first 10 bucks. So do you think that person is going to be more responsive to you in the inbox? Or do you think the guy who's on your list and 10 other marketers list and half of those marketers are better than you because they're seven figure marketers. You're a five figure marketer. And these cats do this every day. <laughs> That's all they do. I mean, you know, it's fun. I, I joined a, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I joined this this guy, I know he's a big internet marketer. He's in, he's into the uh, JVZoo Warrior Forum product launches. He doesn't really have much of a online presence. It's actually kind of spammy, which kind of puts me off to some of these guys because they're just like so spammy and they have like zero, like, like you just don't know if anything they're saying is true. But I joined this guy's email list. I don't even, I'm not even kidding. I joined this guy's email list. He's been sending me an email every single day, sometimes two or three with like two or three different opportunities every single day. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. Some of these guys on like some of these forums are just like, it's just like so sketchy. I feel like it's such a big difference between like having a personal brand, putting out content, building up a list versus just being like this like person with a mask on, just getting all these products and just spamming the crap out of everybody. It's a good you know what point, I mean? man. It's, yeah, totally. And I, I totally agree with you, man. I mean, 
that's my problem with that business model is it, it makes it a little bit harder to build a brand. Like with me, I launched products under the Epic Conversions brand. And I want that name of Epic Conversions to be synonymous with quality, with over delivering. And, and like, it's a lot easier for me to build that brand with a free line, with, with putting stuff out there for free, measured, right? Consistently on a measured basis, like we do on YouTube. We put content out there on YouTube consistently. It's just easier for brand awareness and building a brand when you have a free line. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's not for everybody. It's more work to put free content out there. But I think that you build a more hardcore audience when you do that. I mean, and it's so. a sustainable business in a sense because these people know you. I don't know. I just feel like things are changing now, like long term. I mean, you could have an email list, but they don't know you from, from the back of their hand. You know True. what I mean? So I think there's a lot of pros and cons to each business model. And that's the cool thing about having you come on, man, because you're making money. You literally don't work a job and all you do is launch digital products that you create. You do affiliate marketing. What type of results have you had uh, over the years with this with this business model? Sure. I make about $60,000 a year with this business model and I'm getting ready to do my taxes now. It's probably going to be probably a little maybe a little bit more than that, but I don't think I'm going to hit six figures this year unfortunately because like that was my goal for 2017 to hit six figures. I don't think I'm going to make it next That's year. Five thousand dollars a month, man. I think the average. Someone correct me in the comments, but what is the average income in America? Isn't it like forty something for like a household or something? I think. Yeah, maybe, probably. Probably. So, I mean, like that's that. that's above average, and you're not driving to work, right? Other than just going to your office whenever you feel like it. You're yeah. not being told what to do with a boss, right? If you want to do something, you can implement it and do it. I mean, that's yeah. people's dreams, man. People dream. Like, I know a lot of us, like, we're just so used to this, like having freedom, like designing our own life. Like, so many people have no idea what this life is like at all. They clock yeah. in, they clock out, they get yelled at, they don't get complimented on their work, and they come home to their husband, wife, whatever, and they're just pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I mean, you say 60 grand almost like in a bad thing. Like I, I, I heard the voice and I'm thinking to myself like 60 grand, like <laughs> you know how many people, like I have so many friends who would just die to be making 60 grand a year <laughs> working for themselves. That's a good point, man. That's a good perspective. I guess like as an entrepreneur, I don't know, man, I guess like, I, like I take, like when I achieve a victory, like I remember when I had my first five figure launch, like I hit that five figure launch and I patted myself on the back for a day or two. And then like, it was just on to the next thing. You know what I mean? It's like, you kind of got to have a short memory. Like if I, but if it's the same thing, if there I you fail, go. you know what I mean? Like if I fail, like, I mean, geez, man, I had this one launch that only did like two grand. And, and it was like, and some people out there who never done it before might think, oh my God, that's pretty good. I wish I could just make a little bit of money like that on just the, something I pulled out of thin air. I get that. But at the same time, you know, we don't clock in, we don't clock out. We make as much money as we make, depending on how clever we are. So if you're only held back by your mind, how frustrated do you get if you don't get to where you want to be? Because mm -hmm. you're only held back by your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's holding me back from six figures? That doesn't make sense. You know, why, why do... I put limits on myself that seem to hold me down. You know, it doesn't make any sense. It's almost like you reach a certain level, then you take your foot off the gas. And I see myself doing it sometimes. I'll take my foot off the gas when I hit to a certain point. So we get comfortable. We yeah. get comfortable. It's, it's funny, man. Like a normal job, you clock in, clock out, you're making a salary or sometimes you're, you're getting commissions, but like in business, man, as an entrepreneur, it's like, it's all a mind battle, man. All these limiting beliefs, the way we look at things, perspectives, how clever, how creative you are. Creativity, that's probably the best word to describe like how to be successful as an entrepreneur. True. How can you create something that adds value? How can you create something that solves a problem for somebody? Right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, just, I mean, it's true, it's, man. I mean, yeah, because like, look, I mean, I remember, you know, you've been doing, I know like I was following your videos forever. I mean, here's what's crazy. Okay. 20 years ago, I was a teenager. And if I wanted, all right, let's, let's be honest. 20 years ago, I was 21. 
<laughs> but let's, let's, let's not stretch it. But but no, but look, look, when I was 15, if I wanted to make money, I'd have to go go from neighbor to neighbor and see if they'd like me to mow their grass. <laughs> I make like 20 bucks. Now you can be 15. You can start a YouTube channel, become a social influencer, and you can stay at five star hotels for free just because you're a social influencer with two million followers. Um, and, and it's 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 a crazy time we live in. I mean, you know, like you, you have a YouTube channel, like tons of how many subscribers do you have now on your YouTube channel? Like 70? Uh, a little over uh, yeah, a little over 70. Oh man, look, you got that. You got that silver play button in your sights, dude. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm, it's a 2018 gold, man. I'm telling you, next time we talk, it's going to be back. It's going to be right where yours is, man. Boom. Yeah, that was not real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but like, uh, yeah, so it's great. But like that is funny because you can take that. You can say, you know what? Let me create a little video course teaching other people to do what I did, right? And because there's a lot of people out there who would love to be able to have 70,000 subscribers on a YouTube channel and you could just like share your experiences and those videos and be like, look guys, here's the course I took. Here's what, here's the path I took. Here's what I did. And you know, I was able to achieve these results. I think anybody could do it if they do this, this, and this package that up into a little course, put it out there for sale and, and sell like, you know, Ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of units, and like you created that from nothing, dude, from nothing, just out of thin air, and you just turn that into like fifteen grand out of thin. And you're air. able to help people and make a difference while yeah. you're actually building your own business. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's nuts. I, and then so so I know what some of the people watching this interview are gonna say when I say that. They're like, yeah, whatever, man. That's raking profit. 70 I don't have 70,000 subscribers, bro. I am not doing anything. I'm working at the gas station down the road. How am I supposed to pull something out of thin air? What am I going to mm. pull like how to pump someone's gas out of thin air and sell that? No one cares about that. No. So here's what you can do, right? You don't have anything. So what you do is you outsource the experience, okay? So for you guys who haven't done anything, what you want to do is you want to reach out to about five people who have done something. Find an angle, find a theme. I want to do a product that teaches people how to get 10,000 subscribers on an email list. I don't even have a YouTube, or I'm sorry, on a YouTube channel. 10,000 subscribers on a YouTube channel. I don't even have a YouTube channel. How the hell can I do that? No one's going to listen to me. I don't even, I'm not even on YouTube. Eh, wrong. You can go out there and you can interview five people that have at least 10,000 subscribers Ooh. on on a YouTube channel, you can interview them, ask them how they did that. How did you do that? How would you recommend someone who's just getting started do that? Put that, package that, those five interviews into a product and that has extreme value. And what you've essentially done is you've outsourced the experience and you've probably done it for free because you probably didn't even have to pay for those interviews. So that's how you can get started. If you don't have experience doing that's crazy, you outsource the experience. So. That's crazy. I'd, I'd even like to jump in as well. You know, I'm a big Gary V fan and, and Gary V says the future isn't in being the expert because a lot of people, they don't start a YouTube channel because they're like, I'm not an expert. I think that, and I find the most value in watching content, especially like business content from people who are documenting the journey. Start a YouTube channel about working at a gas station and documenting the journey of, I don't know, selling your first $10,000 on Amazon. Yeah. And then you create that people are going to be attracted to it because the average person is having zero success online. Let's just be real. Most people want to get into it. Most people never take that leap of faith, but then you create that you attract people and then you could either build a way you could build a course or something for free, give it away. Now all your subscribers join that. Now you have an email list. True. You're That's true. You're, it's crazy, man. Like it's uh, it's amazing, man. It's, it's, it's cool, man. So you're, you're definitely, Doing really, really well, man. I mean, uh, before we end, what are some of your goals for 2018, man? I know you, you know, you've got the YouTube channel, you're doing affiliate marketing, you're promoting products, creating products. You've got your membership site with over 700 members. I'm looking at some of my notes. Where do you see yourself going, man? What are some of your goals that you have coming up? So in 2018, uh, I'd like to do six figures for a change uh, instead of being a slacker uh, and doing just five figures. I'd like to do that, man. And, uh, you know, also 
another goal of mine is I'd like to, we were talking about this before the interview, but I'd like to actually create kind of an out, an outsourced team. I want a team, especially like for my membership program, I'd like someone to kind of be overseeing that project and just making sure content's getting putting there in there routinely, regularly every month. I just want to get that outsourced, you know what I mean? The outsourced team together. And then I got this vlog I just started. We were talking about that. I got this vlog I just started, man. It really has no purpose or meaning, man. I'm just doing it. And I'm like the Seinfeld vlog. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's true, man. (laughs) What am I watching? I don't know, but I love it. Yeah, I'm just doing this, man. And, you know, I don't even know why I'm doing it, dude. This is like one of the most boring places in the world to live. I I live in Ohio. You're having fun. I've been watching them. You just, you're having fun, man. This guy, the other day, he starts his vlog off. I swear to you. And there's a freaking huge door in his side, his car. <laughs> and he's driving with the door. And I'm like, don't hit a bump. This thing's going to like decapitate you. Like, <laughs> Vlog over. <laughs> yeah. I don't oh, know, man. man. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to keep it going all year, dude. If I could keep that vlog going all year, dude, I would consider that a massive goal. Every bit is. Every bit is uh, fulfilling is is the six Consistency figure goal because it's you know how it is, man. A vlog is hard, dude. Yeah, uh, you know I was saying before the show, man. It, it came to the point where it was just it was just taking too much time and energy out of my day, man, and it wasn't really aligning with my goals. But it's fun, like for a short short term, like doing a couple weeks or a month or two. Yeah, but man, I give it up to all those people like Roman Atwood who have like been vlogging their life for like nine years. I mean. Granted, they're probably bringing in like 20K a day in Google AdSense off of like 9 million people. So that might be a little bit of a motivating factor. But that's cool, man. You know, a vlog is fun and it's a great way to connect with people. The other goal I would say, my last thing I would say, guys, is you can get lost in this online journey. I have a family of four I support and people who tell you their family comes first, and their business comes third after God and all this other stuff. I mean, look, I'll be honest with you guys. If you want to succeed here, it's going to take sacrifice. I mean, you're going to you're going to you're going to take time away from your family to work on your business. You're going to take time away from going to church or whatever to work on your business. And all, all I'll say is, you know, there's not a clock in and a clock out. So you could spend hours and hours and hours and days and days. There's always something else to do. So, I would say just try to keep things in perspective. The reason you're probably doing this in the first place is so that you can be with your family, spend time with your family, and don't let your family get swallowed up by your goal of online success. That, that's what I would say, man. That's, that's what I would say. I mean, they, they need to come first no matter what, man. So Cool. Awesome. Well, that, there we go. Cam Jennings from Zero Fats YouTube channel coming in with EpicConversions.com as well. Appreciate it, man. I know we were kind of all over the board. I, I was throwing a lot of different things at you, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you know, so many podcasts and videos I watch, they're just so organized and clean. And I, I want these to be more of like a natural conversation. You know, when you have a conversation with someone, you're jumping all over the place. So I think we dropped a lot of value in different areas. I think we've probably, probably going to bring a lot of questions up for people. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments coming in. So I'll be in there. Uh, helping you guys out, but be sure to follow him. Cam, I'm going to leave all his information down below, YouTube, blog, his vlog, uh, Facebook, all that good stuff. But uh, thanks for coming on, man. Crush 2018. You're doing a great (laughs) job so far, man. And and just keep following your dreams, brother. Hey, dude, thanks so much for having me on. Maximum respect. I appreciate you, man.